I've heard Kamala Khan, the new Miss Marvel, described as a comic book nerd living inside a comic book. Not only is she a huge fan of superhero exploits and adventures, but she's also incredibly knowledgeable about them. And this offers her a kind of advantage when she herself is thrown into the world of capes and tights. She knows all about the heroes, but they don't really know her. Welcome to Comic Misconceptions, I'm Scott, and first and foremost, I'd like to thank James on Twitter who went out of his way to ask G. Willow Wilson exactly how to pronounce Kamala's name. This is how I thought it was, I just wasn't 100% sure, so thanks for that, and now we can continue, confidently knowing that I am not mispronouncing things. Huzzah! Also, spoilers for Miss Marvel comics. I love Miss Marvel, I really do. In my humble opinion, Kamala is one of Marvel's most accessible and engaging characters. She's quirky and funny and smart and a million other things, but I think the characteristic that makes her so relatable is the fact that she, like us, is a comic book fan. Well, specifically, she's a fan of the superheroes who exist in her real world, which just so happen to be the same heroes that exist in the form of comics in our actual world, unless you believe that comic book characters do really exist, but that is an entirely different topic for another time. Foreshadowing. The point is that she is just as much a fan of the Avengers as you or me. Heck, she probably likes them way more. Kamala writes fan fiction about the Avengers and the X-Men, idolizes Carol Danvers as her own personal hero, admins on two superhero fan sites, and she even out-nerded Coulson. Yes, Phil Coulson, who spent his whole life studying heroes and villains to know their strengths, weaknesses, powers, weapons, histories, and more. And Kamala corrected him when he mistook Plant Man's animator gun for the Veggie Ray, which... I mean, obviously it's the animator, the Veggie Ray has a longer barrel. Come on, Coulson, what are you doing? But you understand what I mean. She's a fan of superheroes in a world full of superheroes. They are her version of movie stars. And coincidentally, there's an interesting relationship that happens between celebrities and their fans called parasocial relationships. Parasocial relationships are a kind of relationship that forms between you and someone you don't actually know, an actor, musician, a host of a fairly popular YouTube show close enough, by consuming media from or about that person. It's a one-sided relationship where you know a ton about someone, but they don't know you. At least, not in the way that you know them. In reality, though, you don't actually know them. You just feel like you do. And there's a pretty simple reason for this. Think about how often you see your favorite celebrity on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or any other places you follow them. Historically speaking, if you saw a person as often as you see them, it's because you actually did know them. Although parasocial relationships have existed long before Twitter, platforms like it have helped these relationships transform and become more interactive and more personal. Modern culture has made sharing private moments of our everyday lives the norm through social media. Doing so can cultivate and even strengthen parasocial relationships because you feel as though you're participating in shared personal experiences. You feel a sense of closeness, certainty, and intuition the same way you would with someone you have a traditional friendship with. In fact, parasocial relationships have many similarities with traditional relationships. They're voluntary, for one, plus they elicit similar feelings in viewers like affection, gratitude, loyalty, and more. But because these types of relationships are one-sided and the viewer doesn't actually know the celebrity, sometimes they might subconsciously project certain attributes onto the celebrity to fit their own wants and needs. They might create a false mental image of what that celebrity is like that could be far removed from how they actually are. And through that mental image, the viewer may develop their own identity about themselves. I think the most obvious example of this in Kamala's case is her relationship with Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel, aka the original Miss Marvel. Clearly Kamala has found a sense of identity with Carol. I think that idea is most apparent when it comes to Kamala taking up the name Miss Marvel as her own, but when she first gets her powers, Kamala actually becomes Carol Danvers. She has this mental image of Carol as, quote, beautiful and awesome and butt-kicking and less complicated. When Kamala first gains her powers and shapeshifts into Carol, the experience turns out to be a little bit different than how she imagined it would be. Being Captain Marvel wasn't liberating, it was exhausting. When Kamala finally met Captain Marvel, she naturally freaked out at first, but during their adventure, Kamala was able to see Carol in a new light. No longer was she learning about her hero secondhand through forums and blog posts and news articles and the like, Kamala was able to get a first-hand experience of the real Captain Marvel. And when it was all over, Kamala remarked that Carol was 100% different than what she expected. When we talk about it like this, it almost seems like 
like we're setting ourselves up for disappointment if we ever did get to truly know our favorite celebrities. There's gotta be an upside, right? Some advantage parasocial relationships have to traditional relationships. Well, generally speaking, parasocial relationships are high reward and low risk. You get the benefits of a real relationship, support, encouragement, companionship, without the risk of rejection. They can also be a relief from strained real life relationships and act as a buffer against a loss of self-esteem. So it's no wonder why Kamala gives into these types of relationships with her favorite heroes. We see how her relationship with her family is a bit strange. She's constantly arguing with her parents who largely see her as a disobedient child. Her mother thinks Kamala is throwing her life away and ruining the family. And when she and her father have a nice, genuine moment together, he, in her mind, ruins it by punishing her. Heck, even her crush turned out to be an evil henchman. Parasocial relationships with superheroes are Kamala's way of finding support, understanding, and motivation in her everyday life from an expanded social circle of people who won't reject her or find her and her desires to be unworthy. It's like when you have a bad day, so you come home and put on your favorite movie or TV show. You feel as though you're in the presence of friends, and it can be comforting. Which actually brings me to another interesting point about parasocial relationships. They don't have to be between you and a real person. These relationships are very commonly formed between us and fictional characters. You might get glimpses into the private lives of celebrities through either what they put out voluntarily through social media or whatever the paparazzi happen to capture, but with a fictional character in a book, or a movie, or a comic, you know everything. We see every detail of Kamala's personal life. We can read her thoughts to know exactly what she's feeling at every instant. We've seen her private interactions with her family and friends. We're with her during the happy moments when everything's going great, and the terrible moments when the world seems to be falling apart, both metaphorically and literally. Heck, Kamala herself has even shown that she has had parasocial relationships with fictional characters as well when she remarks that she's never thought about being in love with somebody who wasn't made of pixels, most likely referring to a character in World of Battlecraft, the video game she frequently plays. And if the letters pages in the back of Miss Marvel prove anything, it's that people are developing their own relationships with Kamala. People from all over writing in about how they feel a kinship with her, or how she's stolen their hearts, or how they know her struggles. But no matter how much readers like you or me feel like we know Kamala, she can't possibly know us because she's not real. It's another parasocial relationship. Meta. But there is one other aspect of parasocial relationships that I want to touch on. As author Jennifer Barnes asks in her TED talk on the subject, quote, given that we're throwing so much emotion into make-believe people, who are these people? Who does media represent? And if our popular media is disproportionately white and disproportionately male, and if it concentrates on some groups and excludes others, what is that doing to our perceived social circle? End quote. I think Kamala is helping in this area as well by being a woman of color who is headlining her own title. Miss Marvel editor Sana Amanat said that Kamala Khan came together in response to that global subconscious desire for representation, adding, quote, We all want to be heroes, don't we? And wouldn't it be amazing if heroes looked just like us? What do you guys think? Does Miss Marvel do a good job at showcasing the ups and downs of parasocial relationships? Can Kamala help redefine our perceived social circles? And is there a comic book character you feel close to? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments below. And if you want to know who actually owns the name rights to Captain Marvel, check out a video we made a while ago about the fascinating legal issues surrounding the name. And if this is your first time hanging out with us here at NerdSync, consider subscribing to our channel. We make new videos every week that ask questions and make learning a little bit more accessible through the amazing world of comics, so make sure you hit that big sexy subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Once again, I'm Scott, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you guys on Friday for another video. See ya.